2,000 years ago, an Ethiopian eunuch was sat in his chariot, reading from Isaiah 53. And he asked the question, Who is the prophet writing about? Hello Parkstone Church and welcome to this short devotional. Let's begin with the reading from Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah 53 is a well-known passage of scripture, and one which is also referred to in Acts chapter 8. The book of Acts tells us about an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Queen of the Ethiopians, who had gone to Jerusalem to worship. On his way home, he sat in his chariot reading Isaiah 53. Philip was sent by the Holy Spirit to go up to the chariot, where Philip could hear the man reading from Isaiah. And so Philip asked him, Do you understand what you are reading? How can I, the man said, unless someone explains it to me? And so he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Isaiah begins describing a man who would have nothing desirable about his appearance. A man who would not be born into any kind of privilege, removed from or indifferent to the lives of ordinary people. Instead, this man would be familiar with pain and suffering, despised by many and held in low esteem. Through the passage, Isaiah tells us something of the humility of this man and what would happen to him. Oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. This man would make no defence in an attempt to prove his innocence in order that he should be released. Rather, Isaiah states that this man would be killed, even though he had done nothing to deserve death. He was cut off from the land of the living, he was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. 
Multiple times throughout the passage, Isaiah identifies the purpose of this man, what he would achieve. Because as he says, all of us, not just some, but everyone, like sheep, have gone astray. Everyone turning to their own way. Therefore, he took up our pain and bore our suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. For the transgression of my people he was punished. The Lord makes his life an offering for sin. He will bear their iniquities. He poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Spelt out at least nine times in this passage, there is no doubt that this one man is to be a sacrifice for all people and for all sin. And should there be any question about the author of this sacrifice and how such events would unfold, Isaiah makes it clear. It was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. The Lord makes his life an offering for sin. My righteous servant will justify many. This was God's plan of salvation. From these passages, Isaiah describes a man who would suffer and die, although he did nothing to deserve death. But he also goes on to say, it doesn't end there. He will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong. Isaiah writes that this man would die, and that he would live again. There is only one who perfectly fits the entire description of Isaiah chapter 53. Written by Isaiah roughly 700 years before an Ethiopian eunuch and Philip were sat in a chariot discussing it, Philip began with this very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus of Nazareth, after which the man was baptised and, we are told, went on his way rejoicing. 2,000 years in our past and 700 years in Isaiah's future, the Ethiopian eunuch rejoiced to hear what God had done through his son Jesus Christ. God's plan of salvation, enacted by God for his glory and for our undeserved benefit. On Good Friday, our attention is drawn specifically to the events of the day Jesus suffered and died. We remember how Jesus was unjustly accused, though he had done no wrong, and yet he was flogged and crucified. He died and was buried. And we remember that was not the end. Good Friday did end with Jesus in the grave. But we also remember that Sunday's coming.